Greetings, Klausowitz here. So, this is like the first video in a new format, if you want to call it like that, and I call it Klause Talk, in which I basically um, ramble about what is on my mind, and but mostly about things concerning the channel, concerning me in connection with the channel, and of course with history or military history. But uh, sometimes I maybe will also talk about something more personal in the sense of not like all oh, my life story or so. But maybe, for, for example, I plan to talk about the flags behind me, which is basically um, not only connected to the channel, also to like me as a person. So it's going to be this direction, not really a vlog or whatever, um, really just... Um, more connected with the channel, but I don't really present um, so much um, arguments in here. Um, I will often just ask questions or just let my thoughts uh, out at some subjects um, regarding maybe history, military history or some concept in it. Um, and this is like what this is for and it won't replace other videos. And this is also why I kind of like sit down here and everything. So to give this impression of this is something different. This is not a presentation of something in military history or history. And this is also not like where I present or argue for a view or for or whatever. So see it in this direction. And um, yeah, so in this like first Klauser talk episode or whatever. Um, I want to talk about like pronunciation and, and language and like what is the correct language regarding history or subjects in history uh, because I make right now videos about like the Landsknecht which was like a late medieval renaissance um, early modern period mercenary which also like influenced the development of military in Europe a lot and uh, it's of course a German term and why I make this video I often switched between like two little things which maybe most of you didn't recognize but some I know some Germans and Austrians are watching my stuff so some of them may recognize that I sometimes when I'm like talking about the plural, plural, plural blah, 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 can can speak plural, blah, blah, the plural of Landsknecht, then I sometimes say Landsknechts or Landsknechte. And basically Landsknechte is the German plural. While Landsknechts is basically like an English version of uh, the German word, but then put in English plural. And I often read comments in, on other videos about Landsknecht uh, that basically people have an issue with it. And that it's like wrong to to like pronounce it in this way. You should say Landsknechte when you talk about multiple uh, ones and not Landsknechts. And this is where I was thinking about, is this really true? Should you do this? I mean, we talk in English here. So why should you apply a grammar from another language? I mean, you already apply another di uh, different pronunciation and this is another subject because often when you hear people um, like native English speakers um, saying Landsknecht, they tend to say Landsknecht or something like this, which is kind of funny because actually it developed into a form of um, like inside joke between the German speaking uh, part of the Hemo community that basic or of those videos uh, viewers um, basically because Landsknecht sounds in German for us in German like Landschnecke, which is basically for as a German word for land snail. So this is kind of funny. But also this was a point where I cringe a lot when I hear people who can't speak German or doesn't speak a similar language native and then they speak English and say it Lanschnecks uh, because I was like oh, this is so wrong you should at least research it and I for myself also researched like a lot of Japanese terms like weapons and names when I talk about this part of history or um, this culture that I try to be as correct as possible I often said like, oh, I, I can't speak it properly, uh, I try to be as near as possible, so like, bear with me. And on the other hand, I can't speak every language, and I can't research every language, and how should I know which language or which kind of pronunciation I don't know? I mean, I recognize this on, like, hoplites. The term hoplites comes from, like, the ancient Greek word for this type of soldier, and um, basically, this is not how you pronounce it in modern Greek or in ancient Greek. And I was uh, talking once with a Greek, actually, um, uh, which I like um, actually uh, uh, met on YouTube through my channel. 
and he was saying to me how it's pronounced today and probably how it was sound pronounced back then. I can't really remember how it was, but I think it was like that the age was not so much pronounced, so it was more silent, the age. But the point that it was different. And the thing is, yeah, we made an English or a German or French whatever term out of it. In German we call it Hoplied, uh, Hoplied. <laughs> and in English we call it Hoplite. And it's basically wrong. But on the other hand, language develops, and so also historical terms developed in their time. And um, then we often tend to, of course, classify things when we look back at it, something, and then we give it modern terms or modern interpretation of old terms, or we try to give it old terms. And then strange things happen, which always is a thing in German, uh, in, German in languages. For example, regarding sort terms. I mean, they, we have now a more um, developed um, understanding of sort terms of sort types, we have more categorizes, more types of sorts, we have names for to describe a specific design or purpose or origin and for example this term broadsword is actually a historical term as well and refers to those Scottish basket hilted swords. The funny thing is that uh, often in English it gets confused with like the medieval arming sword. Um, but funny thing is, because more, many people point out that this is wrong, this is actually a Scottish basket sword, which is called back then and today a broadsword. In German, through this origin, it happened that actually, like the official German term, which is not official but like mostly used, for a medieval army sword is Breitschwert, which is German, the same exactly word, but for, in German for broadsword. And it actually comes from this, that there was a differentiation, differentia oh, can't speak today, but this basically the, to distinct between like Scottish hilted swords and small swords and this translated directly into German at the time or later on and then we apply it to other words because we actually have for modern swords not so many terms in German. You basically call everything a ding, which is often confused with the rapier which can be called a ding actually, because ding is basically a, a collective term for any early modern period sort. And then we have like maybe uh, we call something then, um, yeah, there was something like a florette. We also have the term florette and stuff like this, but I also have the term rapier, but often rapiers and ding gets confused. <laughs> this is the point. It's, it's, not, it's not really consistent. This is another thing. When you don't have an authority which actually regulates the language or the terms, then what should you, what should you do? And I mean, now can I, I can refer, of course, oh, I used the classification Oakshot used, or I used the classification that East used, or I used the classification those and those used. And on the other hand, what if I disagree with the classification? What if I think this is confusing or so? Then this get, uh, creates problems. And as especially if there are coming up discussions about the right word because there is no right, right word and like objectively because language is a human concept and we determine what is called in which manner and um, there's nothing stopping me from calling everything how I want to call it and of course then people don't understand me and I have to explain myself and maybe they blah 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 but this is how language actually developed people were calling things how they thought how it should be called and then they had issues understanding other people and over hundreds and thousands of years language developed and actually gets closer to each other or even based on a, a, a similar language I mean like French and Italian is basically based on uh, Latin while German and English is more based on a Germanic form of language and by the way German has a, had a huge influence of French while also the English, the modern English language has also a huge amount of French influence. I had a huge amount of French and makes it a lot of bigger because the Normans were speaking a form of French and then conquered England, became kings and um, the nobility and stuff like this. And um, today English has a huge impact on languages. Especially German and French, I can't imagine, but it's been, no, in German, we have, we actually create terms which sound English, but are not English, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, our word for a cell phone is handy, and this is really a German word, but it, was, it sounds obviously English, and handy makes also sense, it's like a, a handy telephone, but we call a cell phone handy. And uh, often people think that handy is like the English term for it. And then this comes this big revelation. No, actually not only Germany calls smartphones, cell phones, handies. 
we, we tend to call it today smartphones more, but basically um, cell phones and the original ones were called handies. And this is, this is what I mean. English has of course a huge impact on our today's language and you can say they are not correct, they are not German words, but then we have the Duden, which is our uh, dictionary, our officially by the state recognized dictionary, and they at some point decide, okay, this is a, a, um, a lot a, a word, a lot used, and they don't basically create words, but they observe the language and look how it changes and what people speak and then they implement those words and then actually these terms like handy and other English words there's actually a term for this um, I totally forgot it um, like when, when like um, English term becomes a German term but as it gets like um, be, gets integrated into the Duden um, or the language but the point is that Anglicism Anglicism this is in German the word ah, but it's not the point here, but this is what I mean I ramble here so the thing is that those the Duden then said, okay, now this is a word of used by people, we should inter uh, integrate into the Duden because this represents the language. And then, of course, this is also the official statement what German is. And this is the point. But on the other hand, we don't have really a big institute defining how we should speak. But yeah, so the thing is that, especially when we look into history and talk about history there is no correct term and the big problem we have in history and therefore military history as well that we don't have an authority on it maybe we base it on somebody who make like uh, published a work about a paper about something and this is often done somebody creates a system and somebody else is oriented on the system they have a lot of influence and so on and so on but I am really pissed about this whole um, discussion about this is not a correct term to use. I totally agree if you are in HEMA, and HEMA basically has its own terms, but also HEMA is not totally, um, has not total authority. I mean, I could claim I'm part of HEMA and I'm creating new terms because there's no regulation about it. And so this is basically what pisses me off. Not so much that we asked how should we call something, but it's often that we tend to just use historical terms with the reason it is correct. And then when somebody tries to maybe implement a better understanding, a better word, um, similar like I try to do with heavy infantry and so on because I think it's too confusing and really no, 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 serves no purpose. Um, or to just to make uh, create understanding and make specifications that people also take specifications or, or like um, um, specifications but if you like categorize something it often takes this too literally I think so this is also the point here by the way this is like this may be a, a chair I don't know it's, it's called chair but um, it's not like what it's really on it. I put like this flag on it because um, it's UK flag because uh, it just looks shit down on it. And I just have a black blanket. But black on black doesn't fit very well, I learned today. Yeah, so the point is, this is like I have an issue with. And I often actually slip away when I make my videos because I am German speaking, obviously. And um, for example, I often tend to say Kaiser instead of Emperor. Because also in German language, actually Kaiser and Imperator, which is what is we call Imperator and uh, Emperor, often confuse this stuff. It's actually different things. We don't say Kaiser and, and Emperor are the th same thing. Um, this is another thing, and this is what I mean. There is no correct term. We, we sh all, of, all of you should say Kaiser to the Holy Roman Emperor. Or Holy or Heiliges Römisches Reich. Because it's the original term, this is actually the historical, historical term, one of them. But the point is that, uh, or name, but the thing is that um, it makes no sense. Holy Roman Empire means Heiliges Römisches Reich. Emperor, or Holy Roman Emperor, means the, the Kaiser. And you may be more familiar with the term Kaiser in the sense of like First World War. But basically Kaiser is a very old term and actually derived from the Latin word Caesar or Kaiser for this title and actually in, 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 in the Roman Empire actually they also weren't called emperors this is also like an English thing to call like big realms big monarchies or so empire and emperors um, but like the Roman Empire called their rulers Augustus and this term also changed later on or basically another term was also like I said Caesar or Kaiser in this term, but Imperator in the Latin sense maybe Metatron should talk about this more but I'm not so like in depth familiar with the language but Imperator originally means something different more like um, a field marshal or something like, like a big general and, and also like a governor at the same time when I remember correctly but this is what I mean 
and in German we have kind of this differentiation that we don't call the Kaiser an Imperator. Um, sometimes it actually refers to it, but also out of translation issues and so on. And um, and um, yeah, we sometimes actually tend to call like emperors from other cultures Kaiser, or when they have a similar concept, then we like China and Japan, we call those guys also Kaiser in German. And um, even though it's a very specific German original Latin term, but this, yeah, again, it starts to get confusing. This is what I basically mean. And I don't have an issue to call all those things by it. It's about understanding. It's about how, what information is stored in this term. And if I say like the Japanese or the Japanese Kaiser, I mean the Tenno. I mean, they call it Tenno. It's their own word. We call it Emperor or Kaiser or whatever. Because this is our understanding of it. If you, I say Tenno to you, you just, what? If I say, oh, it's an emperor, but in Japan, oh, this is what you mean. This is the information in there. And this is all what I mean. And um, it's, uh, when we talk, of course, we, we choose to take the word Landsknecht directly out of German because it was popular, because um, it was, it's um, of German experts actually talking about it and they can pronounce it. And this is why we tend to use it for it. But uh, to call it Landsknechts, why not? Make it an official term. Um, I actually think that Landsknecht is not the best term because it's also confusing in the historical context because it can, like I said in my first Landsknecht video, it can mean different things. And it actually often used in the German language for different things, which can be so confusing. And, um, and yeah, this is basically the issue I have with uh, language or with like the right pronunciation, the right word, the right term, the right language and all this stuff. And people are complaining about it but actually not aware how, which words they don't use right on their own premise or definition. This is why I said this is can't work, this premise can't work. Therefore, we should just stick with the language, maybe discuss how we should call something but not claim it had to be the right term, like historical term, or the term I liked or I learned originally and stuff like this. I mean, like I said, I learned a lot of different words or names for sorts. Um, and now I adopted English terms. And often also call, even if I talk German to some people, I now I often also uh, actually prefer to name those sorts or those things by its English name. And yeah, language. It's a great thing. And yeah, so this is for uh, this uh, first episode of Klausa Talk. And let me know what you think about this format. And if and just you can ask me questions, by the way. If you, I mean, this is, uh, this is pro appropriate for it. And here I can talk about stuff, like I said, about the flags. So don't ask me about the flags because the flags will be a topic in Klausa Talk. But I can also answer any question you like. So just ask me a question if you want to, if you're interested. If not, doesn't matter. It's also pretty fun actually to talk about it here because one of my problems in videos is that I ramble too much and I have a big problem with writing scripts and doing it more now but it gets all just more work into it and stuff and this is not have the much so much time right now for it and the thing is that um, I often therefore don't like to ramble in those videos but on the other hand I kind of like to ramble so <laughs> and talk about different things on my mind and uh, like now so yeah, hopefully see you soon.